Hi and welcome. With the real-time events, we can explore the data generated by applications using an elaborate query engine in real-time. Using the GraphIQL Playground and real-time events features, we'll demonstrate how to perform in-depth security analyses and address common user queries, such as identifying and investigating potential attacks, analyzing IP addresses, countries of origin, and user agents, listing top-blocked IPs, top attacking countries, and top attacked URIs, counting requests that receive status codes like 429, 444, or 403, determining the attack family and the SSL protocol use. You can empower your team to diagnose and fix user issues faster than ever and run intricate queries to ensure your applications are functioning as intended. So let's get started. To interact with the GraphQL Playground, you first need to log into ASEAN Console. If you haven't created an account, see how to create an account on the ASEAN documentation page. After successfully logging into ASEAN Console, go to manager.aseon.com slash event slash graphcoil. Let's jump right in and delve into the details of the top 10 IP addresses originating from various countries, spanning the period between August 2nd and August 8th. In real-time events, we can review data from the last seven days, as it provides detailed information such as the user's IP, user agent, SSL cipher, and status codes. This allows us to search for data in a highly granular way, tailoring our queries to the specific information we need. With this engine, we can detect anomalies and potential problems before they escalate into critical incidents and quickly pinpoint the root cause of issues through granular log analysis. This means we gain insights into application behavior to identify performance bottlenecks. For instance, we can perform a detailed analysis of the geographic origins of the incoming requests, as well as examine the specific SSL protocols that were utilized during these transactions. The results of this query show that 1,352 requests use the TLS v1. Three protocol, 907 requests did not specify a protocol, and 21 used TLS v12. We can also add variables to refine our search further. Let's do a second query to retrieve data, focusing to fetch the top 10 IP addresses that returned a 401 status code that stands for unauthorized request. Let's filter the events to include only those that occurred between August 2nd and August 8th. It will aggregate the data by counting the occurrences of different IP addresses, grouping the results by remote address and the status. And let's order the results in descending order based on the count of occurrences, ensuring that the most frequent entries appear first. The results return zero occurrences. Let's change the status to 403, which indicates that the client is authenticated but does not have permission to access the resource. Now we can observe a comprehensive list of unauthorized requests, each accompanied by a detailed count, organized meticulously from the largest number of incidents to the smallest. This allows us to thoroughly analyze and understand the frequency and distribution of these unauthorized requests. Now let's leave the 403 status commented out, and then we'll have the top I.P quote S and their respective statuses. We can also choose to remove the St. Addis filter from the query, which will allow us to retrieve a broader data set, giving us a straightforward list of the top 10 IP addresses. Now, let's perform a query to retrieve data from a set of HTTP events, focusing on geographic information and returning the results in a structured format. This query retrieves the top 10 HTTP events between August 2nd and August 8th, based on the geographic location of the IP addresses. The results are grouped by the country name and ordered by the frequency of occurrence, with the count of requests for each country being displayed, ensuring that the most frequent entries appear first. In the next query, we will retrieve data from a set of HTTP events focusing specifically on IP addresses from a particular geographic location. We'll filter the events to include only those where the IP addresses are located in Singapore. The query will aggregate the data by counting the occurrences of each unique IP address, remote address. We'll group the results by these IP addresses and then order them in descending order based on how frequently they appear. This means that the most active IP addresses will appear at the top of our results. 
This query will give us the top 10 IP addresses from HTTP events that occurred in Singapore between August 2nd and August 8th. This query is particularly useful for identifying the most active IP addresses originating from Singapore within the specified date range. Now let's take a look at a query that retrieves data from HTTP events, focusing on specific status codes that typically indicate attack-related activity. It filters events to include only those with status codes 429, 444, or 403. These status codes typically indicate unusual activity, such as rate limiting, unauthorized access attempts, or connections that were deliberately closed without a response. The results are grouped by both the IP addresses and their corresponding geographic locations. The data is then ordered by the frequency of these events, with the most frequently occurring IP addresses listed at the top. Now let's collect user agent information to determine the client software, such as a browser or bot, by categorizing requests based on their user agent string. This query is particularly useful for identifying and analyzing the most active IP addresses that may be involved in attack-related activities, such as repeated unauthorized access attempts or flooding the server with too many requests. By including geographic location and status, it also provides insights into where these potential attacks are originating from, helping in geographical analysis of threats. With GraphQL and Azeon, you have powerful tools to investigate and block website threats. Remember, this is just some examples. The possibilities for investigation are vast. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.